Yesterday, Corey and I cut up our vegetables to make a run of bread and butter pickles, so now I'm going to do the second step of the recipe. Now that I've got everything mixed together, I'm going to cover it with a layer of ice and I'm going to let it sit for three hours. Today, Corey and I are making a run of bread and butter pickles. As you've seen, we have them, I have them chilling. They've been chilling for about three hours. That has the most wonderful smell. It's just like you could dig in and and start uh, start eating them. Let's see if I can lift them up and slightly turn it. You can see they look so pretty with all those different colors of the peppers. Mm, they're gonna be so good. So when I was growing up, Granny made bread and butter pickles every year, and I didn't really care for them. Her bread and butter pickles was basically uh, cucumbers and onions, and I just didn't care for them. I don't know. Um, they were okay, but it just wasn't my favorite pickle. Well, when I uh, was grown and I was teaching a cooking class somewhere and a lady that was there told me about this recipe and the name of it is actually Aunt Lee's Bread and Butter Pickles. So I, we made them, you know, for the class and they were wonderful. I loved them. So of course I took a jar home to Granny and let her taste it. She said, those are the best things I've ever eaten. I won't never make mine again. Give me that recipe. So since then, uh, it's been several years now, me and Granny, this is, we both, this is the bread and butter recipe that we make. It's really good. So I'm going to go over the uh, ingredients with you, but you could look in the description below and I'll send you to a post where it'd be easy for you to kind of jot them down and you won't have to do it while, while I'm talking. So the name of them is Aunt Lee's Bread and Butter Pickles. And so you wash and slice thin four quarts of cucumbers. This is a really great recipe though, because they give you the tip that if you don't have enough cucumbers, you could use a combination of yellow squash, zucchini, and cucumbers. So that would be really good. Uh, and then you combine that with six medium onions diced, three, uh, three cloves of garlic or more, depending on your taste, a half diced half cup of diced hot pepper. You want hot pepper. Now, I didn't have any hot pepper, so I didn't put any in this recipe, and I've done that several times over the years. Uh, I do have hot pepper out in my garden, but it's not, it's not ripe yet, so I couldn't use it. And then you need a quart of sweet peppers. Um, so if you use the red or the yellow, they're especially pretty in the jars, but even just green tastes fine, tastes wonderful, and I've done that before. And there's been years that I didn't have enough peppers, like from my garden that I wanted to use sweet peppers. And I just added a little bit more cucumbers to fill in the gap, and that worked good too. So this is a recipe that's really kind of bendable, which is really nice. Then you need a third cup salt and one and one half teaspoon of turmeric. Now that, you're gonna combine all those ingredients that I've just said, and, and then you're gonna cover it with ice, so that's what I did, crushed ice, it's been sitting here, and you're gonna let it stand for three hours. Then we're gonna drain it, that's what I'm about to do now, and then we're gonna combine five cups of sugar, one and one half teaspoon of celery seed, 
two tablespoons of mustard seed, and three cups of apple cider vinegar. We're going to pour that over the cucumber mixture in a pot, in a really large pot, and we're going to heat it till it's boiling. Once it's boiling, we're going to place, place the mixture into our hot sterilized jars, um, leaving a half inch head space, and we're going to put the lids and the rings on it, and then we're going to process in water bath canner for 10 minutes. I'm going to try to carefully, actually I don't think I'm going to try that. I'm not going to try to pour them. I'm going to get me a big spoon until I get some of them out and I could probably discard some of the ice there. I wish you could smell this. It smells so good. A lot of the ice has melted, but there's a little bit of it still there. The turmeric actually gives it a really pretty color too, along with those uh, peppers. Okay, start spooning some of it out. I love this old bowl. Uh, Miss Cindy gave it to me, I don't know, gosh, forever ago, ages ago. I actually have two of them. I think that she found them maybe at a yard sale. I can't remember for sure. They're old and kind of cracked around the edges and you can tell they've definitely been used a lot. But I really love them for things like this or, you know, Thanksgiving or something like that to when you're feeding a lot of people to put, you know, maybe some rolls or a big pot of green beans or whatever in there. They, they're especially nice to use for that when you need, a, need something really large. you make pickles like this, this recipe especially, but pretty much any pickles, really makes me, like uh, Matt would say, starves me to death just smelling it. It smells so good. Okay, I think that's about all my strainer's going to hold. Corey, will you help me just a moment? Mm -hmm. okay. Corey's getting our other ingredients together, but I'm going to let her, let's see, let's let this drain a little bit. Where would I take this? See that I'm going to use my, since this is this recipe is kind of a large recipe, I'm going to use actually my water bath canner to bring them to a bowl in just because it's it's bigger than any pot that I have. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll probably pour the rest of it now. All the onions. I've got to have me a cucumber though. I've got to taste one of them. Mmm. So good. Okay, Corey, here's another, here's the rest of it. Okay. Yeah, you can just put that down in there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, and then we're ready to add the rest of the stuff to it. Okay, we've got our, got our big pot on the stove here heating up. Corey's going to add the ingredients for us, so we're going to add um, five cups of sugar. going to add one and one half teaspoon of celery seed, two tablespoons of mustard seed, and three cups of cider vinegar. And then Corey's going to stir all that up good for us. Okay, now we'll let that just keep heating until it comes to a boil. Back in the back, we've got us some simmering water going to put our jars in, so we'll be ready once this does come to a boil. Okay, we're up to a boil, so I'm going to turn it off, and then we're going to start, start ladling in in our jars. Once 
I get them pretty full, then I come back for some extra juice. for the next one. Whenever I'm putting up food, of course, you know, I have my own memories because I've been doing it for a long time and providing food for my family when the girls was growing up and for Matt and for us to eat during the winter. But also, so many uh, memories of growing up are tied to it. Reminds me, you know, of Granny in the summertime, the canner would be going and, you know, usually somebody screaming for us to get out of the kitchen. There's always a fear of a kid getting burned or the thing blowing up or whatever. Um, and you know just memories of granny putting up food for our family it's just such a it's for lots of families but especially here in Appalachia well I, I can't say especially because wherever you're from you know I can only speak to Appalachia is what I should say there's so many so much of the um, heritage and culture is, is tied to that putting up food growing a garden making a garden each year but also passing down that knowledge uh, to your family to your kids even in the situation of granny where she was making the bread and butter pickles that we really didn't like but she still passed that down and then we found a recipe we did like which was wonderful that's such a part of the speaks to my childhood I guess is what I'm I'm attempting to say Put the put me that jar over here for you. And you're gonna have to run down there and get two or three more. Unless you see some sitting around. No, look, we're blind. They're right over there. <laughs> Uh, when I'm making pickles or jelly or anything, I just have jars. Usually in the summer, I have them kind of sitting around the kitchen. But if I not, I have to go to the basement and get some. Uh, the ones I have sitting around the kitchen have already been at least washed from the basement grime. But um, I thought I was going to have to send Corey down there. But then I, I was thinking, I thought I had more up here. And then I look, and there they are. They're just in a different place than usual. My kitchen becomes really chaotic during the summer months. So when I'm thinking about all that, passing down the, the recipes and the knowledge and the information, um, I also love it when I can use some of the materials that was passed down. The funnel, cannon funnel that I'm using come from Matt's family, so I have it, it's old. And then my handy dandy ladle that I love, it's like the perfect size, it was my Uncle Woodrow's, I love it. And it's got a little lip for pouring, but it's just kind of the perfect size. I have a bigger one that I've had since uh, Matt and I were married. I probably got it at my wedding shower, but it doesn't feel as good somehow as Uncle Woodrow's, maybe because of uh, all those memories of him. Maybe that's that's in there. I suppose it wasn't just his, it's Aunt Faye's too, but she died before Uncle Woodrow, so I was thinking of it as his, but I guess she used it too. So we're just now beginning to come up to a boil. Of course, I had to wash out my water bath canner since I did the pickles in it. And uh, we have a Camp Chef 
it's a propane stove out here on the porch that we love to use for canning. We use it for other stuff, but mostly the reason we got it years ago was to can on, just to keep from heating up the house. And because you can heat up, whether it's a pressure canner or like this, a boiling water canner, water bath canner, you can heat up, heat it up so much faster, so much quicker than inside. We ended up with 12 pints of pickles. Now you might have more or less depending on how tightly you you know you pack your pickles and maybe you don't put as much liquid in them as I did but that's what I ended up with was 12. If you get down to the bottom and you don't have um, and this is not with this recipe but with other recipes sometimes it's what's happened to me is I run out of brine I run out of the liquid you can always uh, make a little bit more but in like in this situation with this recipe I would probably just add a tiny bit of water and a tiny bit of apple cider vinegar. I would just mix those both together and then and then use that for my brine to finish out the pickles. But you shouldn't run out because I, I typically uh, have some left over when I do this recipe. It might depend on how juicy your cucumbers are and your peppers and, and how well you drain it in the first place, you know, when you get them out of the ice stuff. Uh, but I've never run out. But if you do, just make you a little bit more. So now I'm gonna put them in. And we're gonna water bath them for 10 minutes once that water it's just beginning to boil right now to get our first run out. Some of our water's boiled out, so I may need to add some more. I'll be ready to do the second run and we'll be done. So I have the first run cooling here in the kitchen. Corey's out actually the other run just now finished and she's getting it out of the pot for me. You can see how pretty they turned out. They're so pretty in the jars mm, and they're so tasty. So I will let them cool overnight and then I'll go back and check and make sure that they all sealed. If one of them didn't seal I'll put it in the refrigerator and we'll eat that first. Um, and then I like to write the date and what they are, which these are kind of obvious. They're a pickle, bread and butter pickle, but write the date at least so that you know if it's um, kind of if you, if you don't eat all of your pickles in one year. We ate everything, every pickle I made last year over the winter. So we we're totally out of pickles. So this year it'd be easy, but sometimes one or two jars kind of kind of lingers on. So that way you can see, oh, that was the freshest or no, those are the oldest and maybe you want to eat those first. So I wanted to read you a short little piece from uh, Sydney Sailor Farr, More Than Moonshine, Appalachian Recipes and Recollections. This is my favorite Appalachian cookbook. I adore it. It's got lots of good recipes in it, but more than that, um, Sydney Sailor Farr really give a great insight into her growing up in the mountains of Kentucky. She was from Berea. So this is the kind of the intro to her chapter on pickles, preserves, and turnip kraut. So she says, most mountain people greatly enjoy pickles, relishes, and other condiments, probably because they add tang, spice, and variety to what could be an otherwise bland diet. Mountain women and girls learn how early how to make a variety of pickles and relishes. Cucumber pickles are perhaps the favorite. We always planted 15 to 20 hills of cucumbers every spring, being careful not to plant them during the first three days of May, for those were flower days. According to Mother and the Farmer's Almanac, she said if you planted at that time, you would have a lot of blossoms, but no cucumbers. I shall never plant, harvest, or put up pickles without remembering Mother and the really ingenious way she used cucumber hills to thwart revenue agents. Father made moonshine whiskey to sell after World War II. Mother, being a devout Christian, never approved of what he did, but she put herself on the line to keep him from getting caught. 
Father was away from home for a few days, and Mother heard via the grapevine that a revenue agent was coming up Straight Creek. For a few moments, she walked the floor, wringing her hands as she tried to think what to do. Then, having come to a decision, she told me to hurry and get her a hoe from the tool shed. She went to the garden where only a few days before we had made about 20 large hills and planted cucumber seeds. She dug a hole in each hill and buried a jar of moonshine, carefully smoothing the hill into shape again. She hid all the jars this way, then calmly went about her chores. The revenue agents never came. The report was only a rumor. But Mother was taking no chances. She left the whiskey in the cucumber hills until Father came home. Then we set about replanting the seeds and had a good crop that year. The way Mother usually did pickles was the way her mother had made them. She used a recipe that enabled her to work up a bushel of cucumbers in a short time. With several small children to care for, a cow, a garden, and a household to run, Mother worked from daylight to dark just to get her chores done. She had no time for making fancy pickles and relishes. So, of course, that's just a heartwarming story, you know, her looking back fondly at childhood. And it's interesting, the funny part about her hiding the, hiding the moonshine from the revenueers. But I really love the part about how she starts out talking about how, how girls learned early how to make pickles. Um, and, and, of course, things have changed since um, the days when Sydney Sailor Farr was a child. They've even changed since I was a child. But I definitely grew up in a house where pickles were made, where I had to help, where I was, you know, taught at an early age the importance of putting up food. Uh, and I've tried to do that with my girls, too. Corey, because she's helped me today, but she's, she's always kind of took a more of an interest than Katie. And that's okay. Everybody has different interests. But especially since her and Austin have gotten married, she has just really dove into the art of putting up food this year. Uh, she's made all kinds of jellies. She's canned her first green beans over the weekend. And today, of course, she's helped me make the pickles. And she's helped me in years past, too. But it's kind of different when you're actually doing it for your own family. Uh, that You know those, those jars that you worked so hard for, you know, if you were growing the... Uh, beans or breaking them up or picking the blackberries you put all that kind of work into them and then you actually can them and put them on your shelf and then open a jar to feed your family it is just so rewarding so I love that part of the how how she kind of starts her introduction talking about that and then also you know she learned from her mother that's kind of how she ends it so I really enjoyed that and I hope you did too I hope you also in, enjoyed seeing how to make the best bread and butter pickles that I have ever eaten. They are so good. Again, I will link to the recipe uh, in the description below so you can go check that out if you want to. And as always, I hope you just keep dropping back by to help me celebrate Appalachia, which is a whole lot of food ways, putting up food and these wonderful pickles like I've made today, and also the heartwarming stories like the one that I shared from the book.